This week's tale of the old trapper is titled Old Trapper and the Perfect Walking Stick by Sean Henniger. There are a few things in the old trapper's life that he just cannot go without. His trusty fishing pole that he uses when he needs some time to think or some fish for dinner, the cast iron skillet he uses to make most of his meals in, and a walking stick. Now, the old trapper had a reliable walking stick that he had used for years. He always made sure to put it back in its proper place when he was finished with his hikes. On his last hike, he noticed that the middle was beginning to feel weak. As the old trapper investigated, he felt his favorite walking stick break in two, and in the middle of the walking stick, he saw a bunch of termites eating away. The old trapper felt a rush of sadness, as this walking stick had been with him on numerous mushroom hunts, hikes, and from time to time helped to stoke his bonfires. The old trapper gave his walking stick a worthy farewell. After removing all the termites, he put the pieces in his fire and watched reminiscing on all the memories from the walking stick. Now, it's always sad to lose something that you love, but with a walking stick, this presents a great opportunity. Now was the time for the old trapper to set out and find the perfect walking stick. As most of old trapper's tales begin, he woke up early in the morning and had a large breakfast. He packed a lunch and some water, as finding the perfect walking stick would take more than just a few hours. The old trapper stepped outside the cabin and headed into the timber. The trick with finding the perfect walking stick is that there are a lot of potential finds on the ground. When walking, you may find one that is the perfect length, but when you pick it up, you find that it has sat on the timber floor for way too long and has rotted. Or you'll find the end of a walking stick you think would be perfect. But as you pick it up, you discover it is much too short. There's always the problem when you try to adjust a walking stick that needs a few pieces cut off or some bark removed. In the work put into making the perfect walking stick, sometimes accidents happen, and the perfect walking stick isn't perfect after all. The old trapper on a number of occasions had accidentally broken or messed up what he thought would be his perfect walking stick. Now this could get very frustrating for the old trapper, but he always remembered that just because this wasn't his perfect walking stick didn't mean that the perfect walking stick didn't exist. It just meant he had not found it yet. The old trapper was hiking through the timber and found a lot of potential walking sticks, but none of them were perfect. The old trapper felt as though all the sticks began to merge together as he was now having trouble telling a good walking stick from the perfect walking stick. So the old trapper decided that he was putting too much thought into his search, so it was time for a break. And lucky for him, it was lunchtime. The old trapper walked out of the timber and found a nice spot in the middle of the field to sit and eat the lunch he had packed. He had some jerky, homemade bread he had made the previous week, and an apple. After finishing the last of his jerky and bread, he took a few bites from his apple. Just then, at the edge of the timber, he spotted a fat raccoon. Now, the old trapper was full, so he thought maybe the raccoon would like the rest of his apple. The old trapper was one of, if not, the best animal caller in all the Midwest. He could call in deer, squirrels, and sometimes even have full conversations with owls, talking just like an owl. So, he called out to the raccoon, and slowly but surely the raccoon walked to where the old trapper was sitting. Holding out the apple, the raccoon sniffed and pawed at it for a moment, but then backed away. The old trapper thought this was odd, but before the old trapper could react, the raccoon grabbed the satchel and took off towards the timber. The old trapper was stunned and got to his feet as quickly as he could to run after the raccoon. The raccoon dove under a log and was sprinting fast through the brush. The old trapper had a tough time getting through all the brush and was getting caught up in sticker bushes and whacked in the face by limbs of the trees. The old trapper jumped over a log but misjudged the height and fell flat on his face. He looked up and the raccoon was staring back at him with his head cocked. The old trapper, in his best raccoon sound, made it clear that he wanted his satchel back. The raccoon held the satchel just out of reach of the old trapper. Just as the old trapper lifted his hands to grab the satchel, the raccoon took off again deeper into the woods. The old trapper after searching, had lost the raccoon. It was now deep in the timber. He began walking towards the creek where he knew he could make his way back to his cabin. Following the sound of the running water, the old trapper began to get very upset. Not only had he not found the perfect walking stick, but he had also lost his favorite satchel. 
As he reached the edge of the creek, he jumped down into the ankle-deep water. But he had slipped and fell, but caught himself on a limb hanging from an old oak tree. As he pulled himself up, he was grateful for the luck from the limb. But then he looked closer and he noticed that the limb was the perfect length and was solid enough to hold him. Could this be the perfect walking stick? The old trapper began to saw the limb and before he knew it, the limb was free. He investigated each part of the stick and it satisfied all the credentials needed for the perfect walking stick. He trimmed off a few extra pieces and smoothed it as best he could. Now was the true test. He would use his new walking stick to get back to his cabin. Being in the creek was a challenge with the slick rocks and mud, but the walking stick held up and he made it all the way back to his cabin. Now he had lost his favorite satchel, but this was indeed a perfect walking stick. As he walked to the door, he looked up and hanging from the door was something in a million summers he'd never guess. It was his satchel. The old trapper looked all over and saw just at the edge of the timber, the same raccoon looking his way. Now the old trapper's raccoon isn't the best, but before the raccoon went into the timber, he swore he heard it say, now that's the perfect walking stick. The end. Thank you for listening to another episode of Tales of the Old Trapper, written by Sean Henniger. To support Tales of the Old Trapper, have your parents leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and follow Old Trapper Pod on Twitter. Be sure to share the Tales of the Old Trapper with others that would enjoy the adventure of the Old Trapper. Until next week, go out and create a tale of your own. <laughs>